a linear inequality is an inequality between two expressions whose degree is at most one. So that means we can't have powers of our variable x or whatever it is any more than one. We can't have squares or quadratic. We can't have squares or cubics or anything like that. They all have to be linear equations. A compound inequality is just that. It's an inequality, or better yet, a combination of multiple inequalities into one relationship. So like a compound sentence, we'll combine two or more inequalities so that we have like three relations or four or however many more we need. Graphing on a number line is exactly review from like seventh grade, maybe, maybe eighth grade. Graphing on a number line will do the following. If I want to graph x as greater than negative 3, I'll place negative 3 on the number line. And I want to represent all the numbers that are bigger than negative 3. So to do that, say we'll start at negative 3 and I'll draw an open circle because x cannot be negative 3. And then I'll point in the direction of the numbers bigger than negative 3, namely to the right. And voila, graph. Similarly, if we're looking at 0 as an interesting point, all the numbers that are less than or equal to 0 start at 0 and move to the left. Negative 2 is less than x, and x is less than 3. Well, let's see. The interesting points are at negative 2 and at positive 3. If x is bigger than negative 2 or equal to, it's got to start here. But if it's also, also is less than 3, it's got to end at 3. And all those numbers have to be in between. Notice that x is written in between. This inequality is kind of nice. The inequalities flow in the same direction. You could rewrite this. This is also called an and inequality because this could be written as x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and x is less than 3. And being the logical statement that both have to be true so only the overlap can happen. Or inequalities are a little bit simpler, I think, in that we just need to graph both of these independently. Because the or logical statement in math says that x could be either one, the other, or both, as long as it's around. So x is negative 1 or less than negative 1. Negative 1 is interesting. Less than, strictly less than, goes in this way. Or it could be bigger than 1 um, or equal to 1. So we'll fill in and bigger than or greater than goes to the right. Solving graphing on a number line, we'll solve equations or solve inequalities the exact same way we solve equations. The only thing to remember is that if you multiply or divide by a negative, then flip the inequality. If at any point you multiply or divide, then flip the inequality there and just keep solving. But all the other processes are the same. So if we want to say, say solve this first inequality for x, I'll gather all the x on the same side. In this case, we'll gather on the left. So I'll subtract 6x's. You could gather on the right, but I'm on the left. I like gathering all the variables on the left. So I have negative 2x plus 3 is less than or equal to negative 5. Subtract 3. And negative 2x is less than or equal to negative 8. Divide by negative 2. And we end up with the inequality x is now greater than, because we divided by a negative, positive 4. So graphing my solution, I get 4. It's greater than or equal to, fill in. And it's got to go in this, to the right, to the greater than side. We solve 
uh, compound inequalities are the if we solve a compound inequality that's an and, we'll, if it's x is in between, whatever we do to the middle to isolate x, we'll do to both sides. So if we need to subtract 5 from the middle, we'll subtract 5 from both ends. We get negative 15 is less than 3x is less than 3. And now we want to divide by 3 to get that by itself. We'll divide both sides by 3 and get the compound inequality. Negative 5 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 1. Graphing that, just like we did above, negative 5, 1, less than 5, less than or equal to 1, connect the dots. Solving a compound or an equality, we'll solve those independently of each other. Um, just in my head, uh, add 1, divide by 2, we get x is less than or equal to negative 3, or subtract 3, divide by 4, x is greater than or equal to 1. And graphing each of those, we get negative 3, less than or equal to, this way, 1, less, greater than or equal to, goes this way. The second idea for today is looking at absolute values. Absolute values, if you, we just need to remember that absolute values stand for distances from zero. So absolute value is simply just the distance an expression is from zero. It's a distance. It's always positive. The other vocab word that goes along, the second part is extraneous solution. An extraneous solution is simply that. It's an extra solution that does not fit the original equation or inequality. It's an extra solution we get. You get it from doing correct processes, but when you go back to the beginning, they don't fit. So for example, um, so they don't fit. When we're solving absolute value equations or inequalities, we're always going to have two answers because absolute value represents a distance. Distances could be positive. You could walk, if the absolute value of x is 5, then x could be to the right 5, or x could walk to the left and get to negative 5. There's always two answers. In particular, we can get those two answers in an equation by simply rewriting the equation so the absolute value is isolated. And then we'll take what's inside and set it equal to walking to the right, in this case 15. And we'll create a second equation with what's inside. And we'll walk to the left 15, or make it set it equal to negative. And solve each of these equations independently. And we'll say add 9. And get 2x equals 24, therefore x is equal to 12. Same thing, 2x equals negative 6, x is negative 3. Solve. Now we'll check for extraneous solutions. So we'll take each solution and plug it back in to the original equation. So we'll say, is the absolute value of 2 times 12 minus 9 equal to 15? 2 times 12 is 24. Minus 9, absolute value. Is the absolute value of 15 equal to 15? Yes, indeed. 12 is a solution. So the same thing with the negative. If we do 2 times negative 3 minus 9, 
absolute value. Is that equal to 15? Well, 2 times 3 is negative 6 minus 9. Is the absolute value of negative 15 equal to positive 15? Yes, indeed. 15 is 15. Both are solutions. X could be 12 or X could be negative 3. Same thing for the middle one. I'm going to skip doing it. You can do it on your own. The last one, it's all the same way. The absolute value is isolated. So we'll take what's inside and set it equal to the positive. Equals positive 6x. And what's inside whoops, plus 10 equal to the negative. And solve. So we'll, let's gather, say, we'll get the x's on the right side of the sign. will be a little bit less complicated. We get 10 equals 2x. X equals 5. And in this case, we get 10 equals negative 10x. X equals negative 1. And we'll go through and check for our extraneous solutions just like we did before. So if I plug in 5 back to the original, we end up with 5 times 4 is 20. 20 plus 10 is 30. And is that equal to 5 times 6? 30. Absolute value of 30 equals 30. Yes, indeed. 5 is the solution. Plug in negative 1 back to the original, and you get the absolute value of negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 10 is 6. And that's equal to 6 times negative 1, which is negative 6. The absolute value of 6 does not equal negative 6. In fact, this is saying, simply put, 6 equals negative 6. This is false. This is a signal for an extraneous solution. That means negative 1 does not work. So the only answer in this case, x can be equal to positive 5. Lastly, we'll look at absolute value inequalities. An absolute value, recall, has to be the distance from 0, the distance of an expression from 0. In this case, it's saying the distance of 3x minus 7 is from 0 has got to be bigger than or equal to 5. So if we get a sketch, we just get a kind of a quick sketch of what the original problem looks like. And if we have 5 negative 5, and 5. It's saying that whatever 3x minus 7 is has to be bigger than or equal to 5. It's, it has a distance that's bigger than 5. So the only place where distances are bigger than 5 are at 5 and to the right, because it's or equal, or at negative 5 and to the left. This graph looks an awful lot like the absolute value inequalities on the front side of the notes. So we're going to solve these just like, we're going to, since the graph looks the same, we're going to solve these exactly like they're an absolute value inequality. So we'll create an absolute value inequality that kind of that matches this graph. In particular, we'll create the following inequality. What's inside is greater than or equal to 5, and also What's inside is less than or equal to negative 5. Our equation matches what the graph should look like. From here, we'll solve each of these independently and then graph the solutions independently. I'm going to change this last one from a, neg from a greater than to a less than to highlight the difference between the absolute value of inequality is less than, but this greater than and less than. I'm changing, it's not. It was a typo. So if we think about this in the same terms as before, then we end up with the following picture. Something is less than 1 and 1. So distance, the distances less than 1 have to be in between. So we need an in-between inequality, which means we need to have an and equality, where 2x minus 7 is less than 1, and it's also bigger than negative 1. Solve, each, solve this compound inequality independently, Graph it, and your solution presents itself. We'll go over the story problem on Monday.